On March 2, the summit-level meeting of the Non-Aligned Movement Contact Group in response to COVID-19 started in Baku. President of the Republic of Azerbaijan Ilham Aliyev is attending the summit-level meeting. President Ilham Aliyev welcomed Prime Minister of the People's Democratic Republic of Algeria Ayman Ben Abderrahman. Prime Cabinet Secretary of Republic of Kenya Wycliffe Musalia Mudavadi. Vice President of Tanzania Philip Mpango. Vice President of the Republic of Cuba Salvador Antonio Valdez Mesa Member of the Federal Supreme Council of the United Arab Emirates, ruler of Raz al Khaimah, His Highness Sheikh Saud bin Sakar al Qasimi. Vice President of the Gabon Asa Republic Mrs. Rose Christiane Raponda. President of the 77th Session of the United Nations General Assembly Chaba Karosi Chairwoman of the Presidency of Bosnia and Herzegovina Jelka K. Ionovic. <laughs> President of the Republic of Iraq Abdul Latif Jamal Rashid. Head of the Presidency Council of Libya Mohamed Yonis Al Menfi. <laughs> Pre
President of Turkmenistan Sardar Berda Mohamedov and President of the Republic of Uzbekistan Shavkat Mirziyoyev Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I warmly welcome you all in Baku, Azerbaijan, at the summit level meeting of the Non Aligned Movement Contact Group in response to COVID 19. More than three years ago, in this very hall, Azerbaijan assumed the chairmanship of NAM, which I can proudly say in the past few years have become one of the key players in international relations. Before starting our deliberations, I want to draw your attention to the following. As you all know, a few weeks ago, a devastating earthquake happened in Turkey and Syria. Being one of the most tragic natural disasters of our times, the earthquake claimed the lives of tens of thousands of people. I invite all participants of this summit to stand and observe a minute of silence in tribute to the memory of those who lost their lives. Allah rahmat alasi. Thank you. We convey our deepest sadness on this terrible disaster and extend our condolences to the families and loved ones of the victims and wish speedy recovery to those injured. We can now start our deliberations before proceeding to the opening session, the summit level meeting is to adopt the agenda. The provisional agenda for the summit level meeting has been circulated among the delegations. Can I consider that there are no objections to the agenda? Thank you. Agenda of the summit level meeting is hereby adopted. I will now deliver my opening statement in my capacity as a chair of Non-Aligned Movement. Distinguished heads of state and government, distinguished heads of delegations, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all in Baku at the summit level meeting of the NAM content group in response to COVID-19 on post-pandemic global recovery. With the unanimous decision of NAM countries in 2019, Azerbaijan assumed the chairmanship of NAM for the period of 2019-2022. Our chairmanship was also extended by unanimous decision for one more year. We are grateful to the member states for their support of Azerbaijan's chairmanship. As a chair of NAM, our aim is to defend justice and international law. Right after the beginning of the pandemic, it was NAM that took the initiative to mobilize global efforts to counter COVID-19. We initiated the NAM online summit at the heads of state and government level in May 2020. The summit decided to establish the Non-Aligned Movement Task Force to work 
out a database. The World Health Organization used the database as a reference point for identifying the needs of non-member states in addressing the pandemic. At that summit, I suggested convening the UN General Assembly Special Session at the leaders' level. This proposal gained huge support among the UN member states. The special session was held in December 2020 and was addressed by over 70 heads of state and government. The special session emphasized the need for increased international solidarity and recognized NAM's leadership in the fight against coronavirus. We considered vaccine nationalism pursued by some wealthy countries, among others, as a serious impediment in countering the pandemic. Subsequently, NAM initiated two resolutions for equitable and universal access to vaccines for all countries, adopted in the UN Human Rights Council and the UN General Assembly in 2021. NAM's leadership in mobilizing global efforts to fight the pandemic once more demonstrated the movement's influence and responsibility. Azerbaijan provided coronavirus-related financial and humanitarian support to more than 80 countries, most of those from our NAM family, either through bilateral channels or World Health Organization. Azerbaijan strongly supports the institutional development of the movement. We initiated the establishment of NAM Parliamentary Network. The first meeting of the NAM Parliamentary Network took place in Baku in June 2022. Furthermore, the Shusha Accords established the NAM Youth Organization in July 2022. The Permanent Secretariat of the NAM Youth Organization will be located in Baku. Our goal is to create institutional sustainability and to leave a successful legacy to the members who will take over the chairmanship after Azerbaijan. In 2021, during the high-level commemorative meeting, which took place in Belgrade, I suggested the idea of the high-level meeting of the NAM member states with the aim to formulate the position of the movement concerning the post-COVID-19 era. With this in mind, I call this summit, which I believe will create an opportunity to discuss emerging global issues. The international security architecture, which has existed for the last several decades, is currently facing dramatic changes, and multilateralism is at stake. The erosion of international law norms and principles further threatens the international order. More cases of violation of sovereignty and territorial integrity and intervention in the internal affairs of states are observed. The decisions of the leading international organizations are not either implemented or the selective approach and double standards are being applied. The new world order is in the process of reshaping. Now the world is witnessing the most serious East-West confrontation since the end of the Cold War with repercussions for the remaining part of the world. As the second largest international institution after the UN, NAM should play a more visible and efficient role in the international arena and actively participate in reshaping the new world order. Unfortunately, nowadays we observe a rising tendency towards neo-colonialism. NAM, which came, to in, came into existence due to the historical decolonization process, should unify its efforts towards completely eliminating this shameful page of mankind. NAM always strongly supported the unquestionable sovereignty of the Union of Comoros, over the island of Mayotte, which continues to be under the colonial rule of France. As reflected in fundamental NAM documents, we call on the French government to respect the rights of the New Caledonian people and other peoples in French overseas communities and territories. The French administrated territories outside Europe are nasty remains of the French colonial empire. 
We also call on France to apologize and admit its responsibility for its colonial past and bloody colonial crimes and acts of genocide against non-member countries in Africa, Southeast Asia, and other places. Another important issue which has been discussed worldwide for many years is the UN system reforms. UN Security Council is reminiscent of the past and does not reflect the current reality. The composition of the Security Council should be expanded to make it more representative and more geographically fair. One permanent set, seat should be given to the non-aligned movement and the country holding the position of chair of the movement should have this seat on a rotating basis. I call on non member countries to start consultations on this issue and present their views to the relevant UN committee. We also support the allocation of permanent seat for Africa in the Security Council. The pandemic had a negative impact on the implementation of the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. The global efforts should be reinforced to prevent inter alia backsliding on targets and to catch up with the 2030 agenda. To this end, we suggested establishing a UN high-level panel on global recovery from COVID-19. This panel could elaborate recommendations on global measures for the post-pandemic period. I invite all NAM members to support this initiative. We should further strengthen the South-South cooperation guided by the principles of respect for sovereignty, national ownership, equality, and mutual benefit. Its agenda is set by countries of the South themselves in line with their national needs and priorities not imposed by the outside world. Climate change is another challenge for humanity, causing serious problems such as water scarcity, food insecurity, and forced migration. Small island development states deserve more attention in this regard, since they are more vulnerable to climate change impact and face an existential threat. As was the case during the COVID-19 pandemic, Azerbaijan will continue to provide financial and humanitarian assistance to NAM countries in need. I declare two global calls to support the post-pandemic recovery of Africa and small island developing states. It's my pleasure to announce that Azerbaijan, as the first donor, is allocating one million US dollars for both global calls. I believe that uh, NAM members and other members of the international community will support Azerbaijan's initiative and will follow us in supporting the countries in need on their path to post-pandemic recovery. Ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned earlier, the UN Security Council is inefficient today. For example, some Security Council resolutions have been implemented within days. However, in the case of Azerbaijan, Armenia ignored the four Security Council resolutions demanding immediate and unconditional withdrawal of its armed forces from the territories of Azerbaijan for almost 30 years. In 2020, Azerbaijan itself restored its territorial integrity and historical justice by military political means and enforced the Security Council resolutions implementation. Probably it was the first case in the world since the establishment of the United Nations. During the years of occupation, hundreds of cities and villages in Azerbaijan were deliberately destroyed and all cultural and religious sites were looted and plundered by Armenia. The liberated territories of Azerbaijan have been turned into a textbook example of urbicid culturicid, and ecocid. Since the end of 2020, thousands of foreign diplomats, journalists, NGOs, and politicians, including from NAM countries, have visited the liberated territories and witnessed the barbarism committed by Armenia. 
Azerbaijan conducts large-scale reconstruction work in the liberated territories with its own financial resources. The government of Azerbaijan spent about 4 billion US dollars for reconstruction work in 2021 and 2022. This year, we plan to allocate at least 1.7 billion US dollars for this purpose. We are building new cities and villages from scratch by applying modern urban planning and utilizing the concepts of smart city and smart village. It's a unique and unprecedented post-conflict development and reconstruction model led by national governments. Azerbaijan is among the most heavily mine-infested countries in the world due to the Armenian occupation. Some 300 Azerbaijanis have been killed and seriously injured in mine incidents since the end of the Second Karabakh War in November 2020. Given the paramount importance of humanitarian demining for the country, Azerbaijan is currently considering setting a particular national sustainable development goal. Azerbaijan sees a direct link between SDGs and demining since mines slow down the reconstruction process in liberated territories and the return of former internally displaced persons. Azerbaijan actively promotes the initiative of launching the 18th SDG on demining. We invite NAM countries to support this initiative. Since a number of NAM member countries are among the most contaminated countries by mines and unexploded ordinances, I would like to suggest forming a like-minded group of mine-affected countries to make our voice heard globally. Shortly after the end of the conflict, Azerbaijan presented five basic principles for the peace agreement to Armenia based on the mutual recognition of each other's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Using this opportunity, I would like to thank NAM countries for their firm stance in supporting the just position of Azerbaijan and not allowing one-sided and biased anti-Azerbaijani statements to pass in the UN Security Council, both in 2020 and 2022. In conclusion, I assure you that Azerbaijan, as a chair of NAM, will spare no effort in further defending the legitimate interests of NAM member states and increasing our movement standing in the international arena. Thank you.